look at that. Going right back to their little home, their safe zone. Sort of. certainly aware of the fence. They know something's up. They're looking at it. I'm not sure they put it two and two together yet because they've never really seen the fence without a hog panel behind it. So this looks different, but they know that it looks a little bit like that thing that's very ouchy. So they're very cautious approaching the edges. Kind of curious, but definitely turns away. Uh-oh. There you go. Good example. That is a pig that respects a fence. So I'm a big fan of using what's available. And I had to cut some of these old ash trees, mainly because they're dead. You can see how the ash borer has gotten behind the bark and done all this damage to it and basically killed that tree. But the tree is still solid enough. I'm telling you, this is not going anywhere anytime soon. So I just use it as a fence post. And there happen to be a couple others down the line there that are also in line. So I'll just take these little insulators and hammer them on there. And these insulators, that makes this fence post cost about 15 cents. But here on this pasture, we're just doing two wires. And this first wire is only about four or five inches off the ground. And this next one is about 10, or 10 to 12 inches, depending on where it is in the terrain. The last pigs that we had, we didn't train them to the fence long enough and uh, yeah they got out a couple times and let me tell you um, that's a sad horrifying feeling when your pigs are uh, not where they're supposed to be and you don't know where they are so this time we did a whole bunch of things differently to try <laughs> very slippery we did a whole bunch of things differently to try and give them enough time to respect the fence and then to establish themselves as a little safe house. Now they treat that little shelter like a safe house. And that's good. Their immediate reaction is to run back. So now several of them have hit the fence. This is good. Now that shelter that I put together is just a couple pieces of plexiglass that I get free and two pallets leaning together and they did not use it for a month they didn't touch it didn't have one rain shine had some very cold nights and they slept over there but i wanted to get them trained you can see where their wires running down over there i wanted them to be to be used to that wire for weeks now, so it's about three weeks now that they've had that wire in there they know what it is and they're still exploring it a little bit but they have a very significant respect for that fence. These posts are all cedar, but they're just these split cedar posts. Now this one's a little thinner than I would like to do the rest of, uh, for more, but these thick little posts about like that are very strong and very sturdy. They're driven into the ground. So if you look at this, there's probably only about two feet of that fence sticking up above the ground. And there's about a foot and a half of the fence of that post in the ground that I just drove into the ground, waited for a nice wet day and drove them down. There are about 50 of them um, all told all the way around. And the cedar was harvested from other areas, some cedar that was cut intentionally, some that was uh, already fallen and that I would just go back and clean it up and turn those nice big beautiful cedar logs into fence posts. Meanwhile, I've also been experimenting with not the nail ends, but creating these little things out of garden hose. I'll show you at a later date how I make those things. Yeah, it's they work well, but sometimes they do short out for a variety of reasons. But it's just one single roofing nail that's hammered in there, and then the wire runs through another hole that I've put in there 
and you see that flap. I don't want to touch it because it's hot. But that seems to work pretty well, and that doesn't cost anything because that's I have the roofing nails on hand. I had a ton of them for whatever reason. And then the garden hose costs nothing, and then the cedar post costs nothing. So that is, I mean, that's a free fence post right there. So this is what the fence post looked like before. So just take and delim the trees, bring them, haul them out over here. And this is basically where I was making uh, the fence posts before putting them out on the pasture. So it's nothing special, just about six, eight inch wide uh, cedars for the most part. If they're skinny, I just use them all together. Um, but split them by hand or ride them by hand uh, using a fro. Sometimes a, a couple wedges and sledgehammer just depends on what I need and how small I need them to go. But then uh, just take a ax, hack a point on them. That's actually a locust right there. But just hack a point on them and then just drive them in the ground with a sledgehammer. No worries. So the only portion of their paddock that have uh, T-posts, the metal posts, are here, right around their pen. And then that one right there is the last one just holding that cattle panel. I was worried that if they decided to run back to their safety area, which we've seen a couple times already this morning, that they might blast through not being able to find it and taking a shortcut and going straight into their little uh, shelter right there. Each of these posts costs me just about 20 cents because there are uh, 15 cents more likely for the insulators that are on there. Overall, it's pretty darn inexpensive to do this if you're willing to put in the work. Uh, if you just want to go to the store and buy the products, and you can do that too. It's, not, it's still not all that expensive, but what we're trying to do here on the farm is have everything that we need from the farm. Figure out a way, how can I get what I need from the farm? How can we do this without leaving the farm and going to a farm store? And during times when all kinds of businesses and things are shut down and nobody's going anywhere and nobody's open and everybody's out of everything, that strategy seems to be uh, really, really paying off. Now, as far as time, how long did it take to make these fence posts? I made most of them in an afternoon. Now, that doesn't count the time that it took to cut down the tree which really happens pretty fast and to delim a cedar tree is actually very very easy because most of the time they don't have a lot of limbs for quite a ways up so you're really only taking off some of the limbs at the very top and then by that time the main trunk is getting so small that it's not necessarily usable for fence posts anyway um, but anyway that that really doesn't take very long I, I would say probably less than an hour to take the tree from standing up to putting it down into usable logs that then need to be split and pointed into the actual fence post. But again, I did most of these in an afternoon and that's probably, again, that's about 50 fence posts. We have a little bit of a program here where we have uh, treats for trash, where they go around and they, get, they will get uh, M&Ms and special treats like that for picking up trash as they go around through the yard. So all these tarps turn into confetti after a while. And I can't quite tell what that other stuff is, but nonetheless, awesome job, girls. Mm. 